Today I will show you the first three Excel functions that I learned on the job as an investment analyst. One of the first tasks you'll be given is probably to calculate cumulative returns and annualized returns starting from monthly or weekly returns. So let's see how it's done. In this spreadsheet I have a series of monthly portfolio returns spanning from July 18 all the way to June 2021. I also know that at the beginning of the period, so three years ago, a client invested one million pounds with us. What I want to know is how much money they have today given that they gave us exactly 1 million. So I want to calculate the total cumulative returns before any fees. To do that I'm going to use the FV schedule function. So I go to cell before, I start typing the equal sign and then I go FVS. So the function is there. If I want Excel to fill it for me, I just click on tab. This function only takes two arguments. The first one is the principal, which is 1 million, is the initial sum invested. And then the second argument is the schedule. The schedule is nothing else than the series of monthly returns. So I'm navigating the spreadsheet with the arrows. I go to the beginning of my series and then I just use shift control and arrow down to select all the series of monthly returns that I have and I click enter. And so now I know that after three years invested in the strategy, the client has a balance of £1,190,414. If I only want to know the extra return, I can subtract from this result the initial investment. So I can go to the formula bar and just subtract the cell where I have the million, which is B1. And the result in this case is just going to be 190,000. If I want to calculate the return in percentage rather than monetary terms, I'm going to use the same function, FV schedule, but the principle in this case is just going to be the unit, the number one. The schedule is the same, still the series of returns. Then I can close the parentheses, but remember to subtract one, which is our mock initial investment. And this will give us a return of 19%, which makes total sense to me. So that was how to use FV schedule in the context of calculating investment returns. The second function we're going to see today is product, which is used to calculate annualized returns. So now we know that after three years, this strategy delivers 19%. But with annualized returns, what we want to know is what is the average return that we can expect each year if we are invested in this strategy. Instead of using a simple arithmetic average and dividing 19% by 3, we're going to do something more sophisticated and we're going to use the geometric average because that takes into account the effects of compounding interests. So what we are doing mathematically, we are taking each of the monthly returns and we are adding one then we are doing the product of all these factors and then we're going to take this number and raise it to the power of 12 over 36. Why 12? Because we have monthly returns and we want an annualized figure and there are exactly 12 months in a year. If we had weekly returns, for example, and we still wanted the annualized returns, then we would raise this number to the power of 52 over 156 because there are 52 trading days in a year and there are 156 weeks if we have an investment which runs for three years. So I hope that that makes sense. Let's see how to do it in Excel. So we start by typing PRO for product. I'm going to use the tab key and then we're going to reference our series of returns. So again, we go to B7, shift control, arrow down. To this, we're going to add the number one. We can now close the parentheses and now we're going to raise this to the power of 12 over 36. Why 36? Because we have 36 monthly returns. It's good practice instead of hard coding the number 36 or whichever number you have to use the count formula because this is going to count exactly how many uh, monthly returns we have. So I'm typing count, then I'm going to B7, control shift down and I'm referencing everything in between B7 and B42. So I can close the parentheses twice, subtract one because I want the result in percentage, and then just press enter and we get 6%, which is how much this strategy has given on average, taking into account the effect of compounding returns. Just one disclaimer on this, I have the latest version of Excel, uh, but if you don't, this function as it is now, 
might give you an error because here I'm using actually an array formula. If you notice in product, instead of referencing just a cell, I referenced an array of cells. So to make this work in an older version of Excel, we have to go to the formula bar and we have to use control shift enter. So you will see that you have these curly brackets. When you have the curly brackets, the formula will work. If you have the latest Excel version, don't worry, uh, just pressing enter is enough. So this is how we calculate annualized returns starting from monthly returns. Now, the last one that I want to show you is how to use some product to identify the sector split for a portfolio. So in this example, I have a portfolio that is mostly invested in mutual funds. You can see that in column A, I have the sector. Column B, I have the name of the security. Column C, I have the individual weights associated to each holding in the portfolio. The weights sum to one, as I can see in the bottom right corner. So this portfolio is fully invested. What I want to do is actually to map this portfolio and check how much I have in cash, hedge funds, equity, etc. So I want to populate this table on the right hand side. So I'm going to do that with the sum ifs function. I'm going to sell F2 and I start typing some ifs. There are just three arguments which are compulsory. The first one is sum range. This will have to be all the weights that I have for my portfolio. So I'm going to C2, uh, shift control arrow down. So I'm selecting everything from C2 to C28. Then the second one is the criteria range. So what I want to do is to sum everything that matches cash, then everything that matches hedge funds, then everything that matches equity. So the criteria range will have to be the column where I have mapped my sector. So in my case, it will have to be column A and in particular the cells. Uh, from A2 all the way down to A28. The last argument is what the criteria is and the criteria will change but now is cash. So I'm saying with this formula uh, please check each one of these lines and where you see that in column A the cash criteria is matched so that'll be true in the first three rows please sum everything that is in column C which is the weights and that will give me the total cash allocation. The only thing I should do now is to lock these ranges because I want to be able to drag my formula across. And if I don't lock this using F4, then when I drag it across, it's gonna mess it up. So I'm just going here and I'm adding the dollar signs with the F4 or function F4 if you have a laptop. The last one shouldn't be locked because I want that to change from cash to hedge funds, etc. So I can press enter and it says I have 8% in cash, which actually uh, checks out. So I can drag this and I see that I have 8 in cash, 15 in hedge funds, 42 in equity, 25 in fixed income and 10% in property. The sum of this, as you can see here in the bottom corner, is 100%. So I haven't left anything out. And this is how you use some ifs for mapping portfolios. I hope that you found this tutorial useful. Let me know if you like this type of videos, if there are other Excel functions you'd like me to explain. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.